and thank you for the introduction. So my name is Hayato Goto from Toshiba Corporation. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to this great conference. Okay, today <coughs> I will talk about quantum bifurcation machine, QBM, and QBM-inspired classical aging machine. This is the outline. It's very simple. In the first part, I will explain what is quantum bifurcation machine, QBM. Here, I use the small b because I'd like to distinguish it from quantum by uh, Boltzmann machine. So, of course, we should use the capital B for Boltzmann. And in the second, second part, I'll uh, explain our classical aging machine uh, based on the, uh, so inspired by the QBM. So here I use the capital B because uh, we should, uh, we often uh, compare this machine uh, with simulated annealing. And the capital A usually used for simulated annealing. So here we use the capital B for uh, this machine. Okay, let's start the uh, quantum part. Uh, first of all, uh, let me explain the uh, recent uh, PRX paper. Uh, this paper uh, was published uh, just this month. In this paper, a group at the Stanford University uh, made a um, very interesting uh, superconducting circuit, including a DC squid array. This device is similar to a uh, standard superconducting qubit called Transmon. <coughs> but the title is the quantum uh, dynamics of a few photon parametric oscillator. So this means that this device can uh, emit microwave photons by parametric pumping. So the, uh, physically, they are very different. And, sorry, uh, <coughs> they uh, demonstrated uh, the generation of a Schrodinger cat state. Here, the cat state is a quantum superposition of two microwave fields with opposite phases, like this. And interestingly, this cat state generation is based on quantum adiabatic evolution. So this device is definitely related to this conference. Okay. And they say, we experimentally realize a quantum car parametric oscillator, KPO. So in summary, they experimentally realize such a new kind of oscillator called KPO and demonstrated adiabatic generation of a cat state. That's very interesting. But here, what is the uh, car parametric oscillator? In such a case, we can always ask Google. And I found two results before 2016. And the second one is maybe uh, in Japanese. So we should check the first one. And at the end, we get this paper. The title is Bifurcation-Based Adiabatic Quantum Computation with a Nonlinear Oscillator Network. And the author is, I get it. This is my paper. So I'd like to say the concept of the KPO was published by me in this paper, to my knowledge. And the second Japanese one is also mine. Okay. So in this paper, I wrote many things. First, I introduced the concept of the KPO. And I theoretically proposed the adiabatic generation of a cat state using a KPO. And I explained this uh, by uh, quantum bifurcation over KPO. And I also suggested the 
superconducting circuit implementation of a KPO. And I also proposed adiabatic quantum computation using KPOs. This is a new kind of quantum aging machine. And finally, I also suggested classical adiabatic quantum, com uh, sorry, classical adiabatic computing using classical KPOs. This recently led to our new classical machine uh, called uh, simulated bifurcation machine. Okay, after this work, I also proposed universal quantum computation using a KPOs. So these two papers established quantum computing using KPOs. But in this talk, I'd like to focus on adiabatic quantum computation. And my work was uh, followed by uh, interesting papers, in particular on superconducting circuit implementation. So, for example, in this paper, all to all connected QBN was uh, proposed. Here, a common link is used. And also, after that, QBM based on LHC scheme was proposed in this paper. And more recently, uh, the use of the 3D microwave cavity for KPO was proposed. And most recently, the experimental realization by KPO was uh, reported. Okay, here, uh, let me explain the case of single KPO. The KPO is more precisely uh, a parametrically two-photon driven oscillator with a large Carnot linearity. So this is uh, defined by this simple Hamiltonian, photonic Hamiltonian. This includes three terms, chi effect, uh, parametric pumping, and detuning. So and in the uh, quantum model, the dynamics is uh, described by the uh, Schrodinger equation. And uh, we also introduced a classical model of a KPO. So we start with the expectation value equation, and we use the so-called classical approximation, where uh, all uh, operators are replaced by a, a complex amplitude. And x and y are the real and imaginary parts of the amplitude. And finally, we get the uh, Hamiltonian dynamical system. This is a classical model of the KPO. And first, let me explain the classical dynamics of a KPO. The Hamiltonian is given like this. And when the uh, parametric pumping rate, P, is smaller than the detuning delta, the Hamiltonian has uh, only a single local minimum at the origin. This is also the fixed point. The fixed point is the point at which all the time derivatives of variables uh, are equal to zero. And when the pump rate is larger than the uh, detuning, then the Hamiltonian has two local minima and three fixed points. This is depicted by these uh, light figures by the uh, black lines. So the fixed point bifurcates at P equals uh, delta. And the blue curve shows the simulation results where the initial state is set around the origin and complete P is increased slowly from zero. The state system follows one of the fixed points. This can be explained by using adiabatic invariant. The adiabatic invariant is uh, the area enclosed by the trajectory, and this is conserved in when the uh, parameter varies sufficiently slowly. So if its initial value is small, the final value is also small. So the 
system follows one of the uh, local minima. Okay, this is uh, a classical dynamics, and the quantum dynamics becomes like this. We start with vacuum state and uh, increase the pump rate gradually. Then, at the end, we get a cat state. And interestingly, the cat state is a quantum superposition of two coherent states, exactly corresponding to the uh, classical uh, fixed points. So in other words, the quantum system can follow both the branches as a quantum superposition. So I refer to this interesting phenomenon as a quantum bifurcation. This can be explained uh, mathematically as follows. First, the initial Hamiltonian is like this, and the initial ground state is a vacuum state. And uh, finally, uh, the Hamiltonian becomes like this, and the final ground state, ground states are two coherent states. Here, the amplitudes correspond to the uh, classical fixed points. And here, the terms in the Hamiltonian include uh, even number of operators, so the parity of the photon number is conserved. And the vacuum state has, of course, an even parity, so we finally get the even cat state, alpha plus minus alpha, by the adiabatic evolution. Okay? And so far, I assume the uh, positive car coefficient. But in the case of superconducting circuit with Josephson junction, the car coefficient is usually uh, sorry, uh, negative value. But in this case, if we flip the sign, signs of the, the other parameters, then again we can get the even cap state. But the, in that case, the adiabatic evolution uses not the ground state, but the uh, maximally, maximum energy state. This is physically a little uh, strange, but no problem. Because the KPO Hamiltonian is not a real Hamiltonian, but the effective Hamiltonian in a rotating frame and in the rotating wave approximation. So we can use adiabatic evolution with maximum energy state. But for simplicity, in this talk, I'd like to assume the positive Kaif coefficient. Okay, next is uh, adiabatic quantum computation. So I explained one KPO can generate a cat state by quantum bifurcation. Here we prepare many KPOs. And we couple the KPOs according to the given aging problem. Then we can get the uh, solution for the, the aging problem by the quantum adiabatic theorem. Okay? This can be explained more mathematically as follows. First, the, the aging problem is uh, to uh, minimize the aging energy given this equation. And here we introduce the coupling, uh, so-called linear coupling. Here the coupling constants are proportional to the GIJ in the aging the model. And the approximate final state are described by the tensor product of the coherent states. Here the S is the sign of the amplitude. So the final energy is approximately given by this. So the first term is independent of the S, but the second term is proportional to the aging energy. So we can get uh, from the vacuum state, we can get the optimal solution by the adiabatic evolution. Okay, here also I'd like to introduce classical bifurcation machine. 
We again start with the expectation value equation and again use the classical approximation. Then we get the Hamiltonian dynamical system described by these equations. This is a uh, equation of motion for the classical bifurcation machine. And I compared or I compared the QBM with CBM by numerical simulation. I solved for four spin aging problem. And the result for the 1,000 instances with random, randomly set GIJ are summarized these uh, histograms. The upper ones are, upper ones show the success probability and the lower ones show the residual energy. So, as you can see, the performance of QBM is clearly higher than the performance of the classical bifurcation machine. So, the quantum machine outperforms classical machine as expected. Okay, now let me briefly explain how I found this interesting model. 2014, I was interested in so-called coherent aging machine. This is a kind of aging machine using optical parametric oscillators. And in this paper, the authors introduced an interesting idea called minimum gain principle. In this principle, we map the cost function to the loss of the network. But at that time, I thought the loss may be not good for quantum computation because the loss usually uh, leads to decoherence. So the next, next year, I replaced all the loss effects by uh, some losses effects. So in May, I replaced lossy coupling by lossless coupling, namely the linear coupling. And next month, I uh, also replaced one photon loss by retuning. But by numerical simulation, I couldn't find uh, good performance. But in July, I uh, replaced two photon loss by car effect. So now there is there are no loss. And I found in this case, we can get very good performance. So uh, like that, I can obtain this new idea of uh, KPO network or QBM. OK, because uh, QBM is derived from CIM, so there is a very beautiful contrast between them. The contrast is summarized in this table. I took this table from my recent review paper on uh, QBM. So in particular, the classical equations of motion for them are almost exactly the same, except, except for this uh, imaginary unit. Here, the detuning corresponds to the single photon loss rate, and the car coefficient corresponds to the two photon loss rate. It's very interesting, uh, beautiful uh, contrast. <laughs> okay, now uh, let me discuss the uh, difference between QBM and QA. So because they are both uh, based on the quantum adiabatic theorem. So what's new about the QBM? So first of all, the device is physically very different. In the case of quantum annealing, we usually use a flux qubit. The flux qubit is a persistent current in a ring at thermal equilibrium. On the other hand, QBM uses a microwave oscillator. This is a driven system. So the physically very different. 
So one interesting possibility is to use 3D microwave cavity because 3D cavity has a very long lifetime, like uh, one millisecond. So this is an interesting possibility. Okay, the second difference is in noise. In the case of uh, quantum annealer, the dom dominant loss, dominant, sorry, dominant noise is thermal noise. And the state distribution becomes Boltzmann distribution by the thermal noise. On the other hand, in the case of QBM, dominant uh, noise comes from the photon loss because this machine uses photons. But interestingly, I found that uh, in this paper, the state distribution again becomes Boltzmann-like because of the photon loss. I explained this uh, result by using the concept called quantum heating. So here I'd like to skip the details, but this indicates that uh, dissipative QBM can be used for uh, QBM. Okay. The third difference is in the LHZ scheme. So LHZ scheme is a good approach to uh, realize uh, all to all connected machine because it is only nearest neighbor coupling. But this uh, needs four body coupling. In the case of quantum annealing, we have to make such a complicated circuit. On the other hand, in the case of QBM, we need uh, only single Josephson junction. So it's a good point for QBM. This can be explained by uh, four-wave mixing. The four-wave mixing Hamiltonian is like this. And if we take the coherent state basis, we get uh, this, and the Hamiltonian proportional to the product of four aging spins. This is exactly what we want. Okay. Okay, the final difference is in the Hamiltonian. In the QA, we usually use a real Hamiltonian and real ground state or thermal equilibrium state. So, and the excited states are always unstable. But in the uh, QBM, we use the effective Hamiltonian and we can use the effective ground state or excited state. For example, we can set the vacuum state at an ex effective excited state. This will open a new possibility. So let's consider the case, the situation shown by this figure. This shows the time evolutions of energy levels, and there is a, an energy gap closing. In this case, if we set the vacuum state at ground state, then we cannot get the ground state at the final time because of the uh, non-adiabatic transition at the uh, energy gap closing. But if we set the vacuum state, at the first excited state. This is an effective first excited state. Then we can get the ground state at the final time. Again, because of the non-adiabatic transition at the energy gap closing. So this means we will be able to solve energy gap closing problem by using such a excited state AQC. But in this case, we don't have to excite, actually. But uh, instead of that, instead of ex excitation, just we set the detuning appropriately. Then we can set the uh, vacuum state at uh, effective excited state. Okay, let me now uh, finish the first part. And 
So let's start the classical part. So uh, recently, we are focusing on a classical machine inspired by the QBM. We call this machine Simulated Bifurcation Machine, or SBM. Okay, why are we focusing on the classical machine? Because classical is innovative. In the sense, the machine is, we can realize a ultra-large machine, and we can easily realize high connectivity. And our first results on this topic was, uh, were published from Science Advances just two months ago. So first of all, uh, let me share with you our main results in this paper. First, we solved all to all connected 2000 spin aging problem with Gij equals plus minus one. And this is uh, called K2000. Uh, this problem was solved by a coherent aging machine in this science paper. And in this paper, the CIM gets good solutions in just five milliseconds. This is about 10 times shorter than the case of uh, simulated annealing, highly tuned by the authors. But in contrast, the SBM can find a little better solution in just 0 0.5 milliseconds. This means our SBM implemented on a single FPGA is about 10 times faster than the CIM. Okay, and so SBM is not only fast, but also energy efficient. So in the case of this experiment, CIM uses one kilometer and one kilowatt uh, fiber laser. But if we can use one kilowatt, we can operate <laughs> we can operate a 25 SB machine. So the energy efficiency is very important. Okay? Okay, the second, we solved all to all connected 100,000 spin aging problem with continuous GIJ. We call this problem uh, M100,000. So this problem is very large. In fact, this problem has five billion connections. If we solve this large problem by using so-called optimized SA software provided by this famous paper, and we use a single uh, CPU core, then about three hours we need to get to this solution. And if we use our best SA using 50 CPU cores, then the time is about 1.5 minutes. But our SB machine implemented on eight GPUs, we get similar solutions just in 10 seconds. So this result indicates we can uh, accelerate uh, uh, ultra-large-scale ultra combinatorial optimization by using such a uh, classical machine called SBM. Okay? Okay, next, uh, let me explain how I derive uh, this new approach. So, we call this simulated bifurcation algorithm. This algorithm is a purely uh, quantum-inspired uh, classical algorithm. Uh, because first I found QBM, and I derived uh, classical bifurcation machine, CBM, 
from the QBM. And our idea is to simulate the classical bifurcation machine by using digital computers. But the, the equations of motion for CBM are a little complicated, not suitable for fast simulation. So at that time, I noticed the momenta y are uh, near to zero. So I first dropped this summation. And after that, I also dropped other two, uh, other three terms. So, and finally, we get this simple equations of motion. Actually, this describes a network of Duffin oscillators. And importantly, this system is a, a so-called separable Hamiltonian system. This means the time derivative of x is independent of y, uh, sorry, uh, time derivative of x is, depends only on y, and the time derivative of y depends only on x. In that case, we can use so-called uh, explicit symplectic Euler method. This method is very stable and simple. So such a uh, stability and uh, uh, simplest, simplicity is are very important for uh, implementing a fast machine, and in particular uh, when we use a PGA. Okay. So next is uh, advantages. So first of all, SB algorithm is suitable for parallel computing. So in the case of SA, we usually uh, update the spins one by one in a sequential manner. Uh, this is not good for parallel computing, but on the other hand, in the case of SP, we can update all the variables at the same time in parallel. So this is a good point for uh, parallel computing. And actually, we uh, our uh, FPGA, we perform 8,000 operations at a single clock in parallel for the 2,000 spin problem. It's a massively parallel computation, okay? And the second advantage is a low communication overhead. So the communication overhead of SP is n times smaller than that for SA. Okay? SA needs n times communication for updating n spins. But SP needs only one communication for updating n variables. Okay? So this figure shows the results for the 100,000 problem. So in the case of SA, the GPU cluster is, the GPU cluster machine is really slow. This comes from the large communication overhead for SA. And our best SA is here. Here is a, uh, use, uh, 50 uh, GPU cores in a PC cluster. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, our best SP is, uses GPU cluster. Uh, this difference comes from the uh, communication overhead. In the case of SP, we can neglect the communication overhead for the in the GPU cluster. Okay. So, I have um, five, five minutes, so I'd like to show you uh, animation uh, before explaining the uh, operational principle. Uh, this shows the uh, dynamics of 2,000 particles when the SB, SBM sol solves K2000. Okay. 
sorry, uh, it's very small, but the part, uh, this point shows the uh, position and the momenta of e each particle. And first start around origin and now rotating around one or minus one. Okay. Um, and finally, so the particle rotating around the fixed points. And we can get the uh, good solution, uh, uh, the identifying the uh, signs of the position as the uh, aging spin of the solution. Okay? Okay, next is the uh, uh, explanation of the di uh, dynamics. So it's very uh, mathematically difficult, but in this paper, I explained uh, qualitatively the uh, mechanism of the machine. I used two classical effects. One is a classical adiabatic evolution. The other is a ergodic evolution. In the classical adiabatic evolution, system follows one of the local minima of the potential energy. Okay? And uh, in the ergotic evolution, the state uh, visit more frequently uh, at around the deeper potential, uh, sorry, deeper uh, minima of the potential energy. So, uh, this shows the, the, the classical, uh, particles we will, uh, find low, uh, potential energy state. So, in this model, we map the, uh, aging energy to the potential energy. So, we can get the low aging energy state. Okay, but the, this is just a qualitative explanation. So, I left, uh, mathematical, mathematically rigorous proof of the mechanism as an important open question. Okay? Okay, now let me summarize. So first, QBM. QBM is a quantum computer using quantum nonlinear parametric oscillators called KPO. And as I explained, QBM offers many interesting possibilities for quantum computation in both theoretical and experimental aspects. And in the case of SB, SBM is a classical aging machine inspired by QBM. And to my knowledge, this is the first example of cla classical adiabatic computation. And so we believe SPM opens new possibilities for realizing ultra-fast and ultra-large-scale aging machine. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. No questions. Hi, um, I have a couple of questions. One is that you showed um, the computation time of basically after solving uh, really huge problems, uh, huge uh, max cut problems. How do you know that uh, you did indeed find the the solution? Uh, uh, so, how about uh, for example the uh, one hundred thousand? Yes. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, we tried to solve such a big problem, and so, uh, so we uh, gave up to uh, estimate the exact solution. So we just calculate the energy, and 
uh, compare uh, uh, different approaches at the same uh, energy. So uh, we don't know the exact solution. So just uh, calculate the energy and compare at the uh, same energy. So just that that is just we can what we can do. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, one more quick question. You're saying that it's basically classical adiabatic um, computation, uh, but there is no uh, classical theorem that uh, tells you, basically there is no classical analog to the quantum adiabatic theorem. So how do you know that you are getting the ground state by uh, classical adiabaticity? Uh, that's a, I think that's a very good question. So, as you know, the, uh, there is no exact classical counterpart of the adiabatic. Yes, yes that's right. So, and so first I thought this result is very strange, uh, because why we can get such a very good result. So, and, and to my knowledge, uh, there is, there are some classical adiabatic theorem, but, uh, known classical adiabatic theorem is just on the uh, uh, integrable system, just for the integrable integrable system, okay, integrable system. And so, or uh, another uh, classical adiabatic theorem is on the uh, ergodic systems. But in uh, in my case. We use, uh, so, uh, here the, uh, just rotating around one local minima. This is, uh, very, uh, close to the integrable system. But here the, we also use this ergotic evolution. So, we, in this ma machine, we use both kinds of dynamics. So, the, I think, known classical adiabatic theorem, uh, cannot be applied to explain this mechanism. So I thought the mathematically rigorous proof is an open question. So uh, let's consider that <laughs> together. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so you stated uh, quite early that the quantum theory is an approximate theory because of the rotating wave approximation. So what happens if you do not make the rotating wave approximation? Uh, do you do you still expect that the uh, approximate version of your theory describes the actual experiments? Uh, sorry, I have not considered uh, the case where rotating approximation cannot be used, so I always assume it's a rotating wave approximation. So I uh, just consider uh, such a simple, simplified Hamiltonian. So now I have no answer to that. So last question. <laughs> How does one implement universal quantum computation with the system? Uh, universal quantum computation. Of course, I probably just asked you for another 40 minute lecture, didn't I? Yeah, universal quantum computation. Uh, you, you have one bullet stating you could, that these qubits, these JPO qubits could be used for that. How does one do it? Uh, uh sorry, uh, uh, I'll catch you afterwards then. Right? Yeah, sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs>